again to the channel we are going to continue our discussions on light today our discussion is on reflection of light on plane surfaces reflection of light on plane surfaces first let's take the definition of reflection so here we say reflection is the bouncing back of light when it hits a surface example is a mirror so if we have this to be our mirror and light falls on it and it bounces back then we say reflection has okay it can also be on a piece of stone for instance even though for a stone is not a very plain surface but if light was to fall on this stone and bounce back then we say we have reflection um, reflection on plane surfaces are governed by um, actually two laws. So law one says that the incident ray, the reflected ray, and the normal at the point of incidence all lie in the same plane. I will take that again. The incident ray, the reflected ray, and the normal at the point of incidence all lie in the same plane let's remember that this normal is not a ray and what we have said so far we've described this one as a ray incident ray and also have reflected ray but remember the normal is not a ray we'll show that in a moment now law 2 what does law 2 state it says that the angle of incidence that we call i is equal to the angle of reflection that we call r so simply put mathematically we have i equals r the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of what reflection we'll see that in the diagram so let's see in this diagram we see a plane mirror so this m represents if you like om represent our plane mirror this represents our rough surface and this side represents our smooth surface represent our smooth surface so we have a ray of light falling on the mirror this is called the incident ray so here oi represent our incident ray then this ray is pushed back the incident ray is pushed back in this direction so this forms what you call the reflected ray or is our reflected ray then we have a line separating the incident ray and the reflected ray that line is called normal so that is also represented by on and the angle between the incident ray and the normal is what we are calling i and the angle between the normal and the reflected ray is what we are calling what? R. So according to law 1, it says that the incident ray, the reflected ray, and the normal, at this point that we call point of um, incident, at this point of incidence, you see that all these, all these stuffs, I, R, and N, they all lie in this upper plane. So it says that the incident ray, the reflected ray, and the normal at the point of incidence all lie in the same plane that is law one then according to law two this angle i is equal to the angle what r that is i is equal to r so that is basically what law two is saying we will see some questions under this later on in type two uh, uh no so we, we come to the types of reflection i beg your pardon types of uh, reflection so he says that here we have we have two types the first one we call the regular reflection regular reflections occur on smooth surface or highly polished surface example of a highly polished surface or smooth surface is of course the plane mirror it's of course the plane mirror or spherical mirrors and so on and so forth uh, spherical mirrors and so on. 
So this type of reflection are called uh, a regular reflection. Then the second type, we call it the irregular or diffuse reflection. Irregular or diffuse reflection. As opposed to regular reflections, this one's okay on a rough what? Surface. Example of a rough surface is the surfaces of, if you like, the, the sea, surface of uh, uh, stone, etc. The reflections here are called irregular or diffuse reflection. And by way of diagrams, so this diagram one represents our regular reflection. Um, and diagram two rep represents our irregular or diffuse reflection. So what do we have here? Here we see that the reflecting surface is smooth. So when rays, when parallel rays fall on the surface, the reflected rays also appear to be parallel. That is, uh, they move in, in parallel direction, they do not intersect. However, in irregular reflection, we see that we have parallel rays. The parallel rays are falling on the rough surface, and after reflection, we have several, how do you call it, uh, points of intersection. So that is what we mean by irregular reflection. Now, we continue our discussion with what we refer to by images. What do we call image in discussions of light? We say that an image is formed when two or more rays what meet. So image is nothing but the meeting of two or more what rays. Now when rays meet, they meet in two ways. Either we have what you call real rays meeting. Or we have virtual rays meeting. When real rays meet, the image formed is called a real image. And when virtual rays meet, the image formed are said to be virtual image. So virtual rays are also sometimes referred to as apparent, apparent, uh, apparent rays. So there is a two types of images, real images and virtual images. We will co definitely continue these discussions on this. Um, Except that perhaps we should take one example of calculations under the laws of reflection. So let's see, question one says that in a reflection on the plane mirror, the angle of incidence is found to be 60 degrees. We are asked to calculate the angle of reflection, and we are also asked to calculate an angle called G, the glancing angle. Um, so we did not mention this, but let's see it by way of uh, diagram. So if there is our plane mirror, the ray falling on it is the incident ray. The ray pushed back is a reflected ray. And this is our normal. Yes. So the angle of incidence is 60, and the angle of reflection is not known. But we know that from the second law, the angle of incidence is the same as the angle of reflection. And therefore, the angle of reflection is also equal to what? 60 degrees. There's a third angle here between either the incident ray and the reflecting surface. This is called glancing angle, G. So it can also be here between the reflected ray and the reflecting surface, G. So you realize that when you add the incident ray, the angle of incidence to the glancing angle, you always get uh, 90 degrees. Or when you add the ref angle of reflection to the glancing angle, you get 90 degrees. So if our incident, angle of incidence and angle of reflection are 60, automatically 
the glancing angle should be equal to what 30 degrees because all in all it should uh, the reflected angle of reflection in the glancing angle must sum up to 90 degrees that is where we draw a curtain we we'll bring our discussion to an end and uh, we hope to see you next time kindly subscribe to the channel please do well to subscribe to the channel to help us make uh, more videos for you until next time is goodbye